Today we are going to talk about Big Muff Pie circuits, what can be modified, and how that affects their sound and tone. This will be the first of a few videos going over all the aspects of this circuit and how to modify them. For these demonstrations, we will be using the DBE Siberian PCB, which can be found on our web store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au. The components mentioned in these modifications can be found in our web store as well. I'll put links in the description below. So for this video, we will be going over the soft diode clipping portion of the Big Muff circuit. So the first thing we probably need to answer is, what is soft diode clipping? In this circuit, because the diodes are set in the collector base feedback loop of the transistors, they are concerned with the ratio of the input and output signal levels. When the difference of the output voltage and input voltage is greater than the forward voltage of the diode, the diode conducts and clips the signal. This means that clipping is only being applied to the signal increases and not the signal as a whole, which produces a softer knee between the clipped and unclipped sections of the waveform, which typically generates much less distortion in compared to something like hard clipping. You can see here that we have our signal coming in, the transistor amplifies it, and then it gets clipped, but instead of a hard clip where it would just sharply chop off the tops and bottoms of the waveform, it still has a little bit of a roundedness, just not as much as the primary sinusoidal wave. So now that we understand soft clipping a little better, let's take a look at our Siberian PCB schematic. On Big Muff Pi style circuits, such as this one, the clipping stage is made of a passive voltage divider, the sustain pot down here, and two consecutive common emitter stages, one right here and one right here. Each of the two consecutive clipping stages keeps the same topology as the input booster in the back here, but now they also include a back-to-back -back diode set to create some symmetrical clipping. The design idea for the double distortion is the first transistor softly clips the waveform in the feedback loop up here, creating the distortion and filtering the signal. After the first clipping stage, it goes into the second one and repeats the operation again, and then refines the distorted signal, creating a harder soft clip. The series diodes C5 and C8, located next to the feedback diodes, allow AC signal to pass through and be clipped while blocking the DC bias voltage, keeping the transistor operating point undisturbed. As we mentioned earlier about soft clipping, the diodes D1 and D2, and D3 and D4, in the collector base feedback loop of the transistors, Clip the signal when the voltage difference between the input, the transistor base, down here and down here, and the output, the transistor collector, here and here, is higher than the forward voltage drop of the diode. So populating your diodes on your Siberian or Big Muff Pi pedal will alter your sound. Knowing the forward voltage drop of your diode selection will determine the plus or minus voltage that limits the signal peaks and what the output signal will never exceed. Let's take a look at a few examples. So here we have both set of clipping stages populated with silicon 1N4148s. This is basically the stock uh, Big Muff Pie classic type of a layout. You'd see this probably also with the uh, stuff that works with the Rams head configuration or the, the Russian mod version uses a similar style type diode setting. The goal is having silicon switching diodes in both clipping stages. So let's just give that a sample listen. This will probably be the classic sound that you already know, but we'll do it anyways. So that is what stock 1N4148 silicon diodes sound like. The average forward voltage for these are around 0.65 volts, so they'll limit the signal peaks to plus or minus 0.65 volts. This provides smooth, tight compression by its limiting forward voltage. Now let's try and alter this a little. Alright, here's one where we take the first clipping stage's diodes out, but we put in or keep in, however you want to look at it, 
the second stage of clipping diodes. And in this case, we're using silicon uh, 1N 4148s, just jelly bean switching diodes. So let's give that a listen. Here's a mod that is aimed for bass players. When we take the diodes out of the first clipping stage, D1 and D2, or where they used to be, it disables C5, the series capacitor, which was cutting out the bass harmonics on the first clipping stage. Now the bass response will become greater as the sustain increases. Also, without a limiter on the first clipping stage, the general signal volume goes up, but cuts back on the compression and gain. Let's go one step further. Alright, so this is the board with all the clipping diodes stripped out of it. So let's give that a listen. So this would be the natural progression. Let's just take out all the diodes. By doing this, the general volume will go up, but the compression and graininess that came from the clipping diodes will be gone. This is typically described as more of an overdrive sound. So let's repopulate the diodes, but with something a little bit different. So what diode mod wouldn't be complete if we didn't throw in some germanium diodes? So we gotta set in the first and second clipping stage. Let's hear how that sounds. So with germanium diodes, like the ubiquitous 1N34As, the average forward voltage for these are around 0.35 volts. So they will compress the sound a bit more and drop the volume significantly. The sound will be much less high gain that metalheads would desire, and would offer much more of a dirt sound that some rock and blues players might be looking for. A downside to germanium diodes, though, is that their forward voltage becomes variable with temperature, so this might be something to look out for. Let's try another kind of diode set. Okay, so this is a slightly different variation. We're using shot key diodes. In this case, I'm using uh, 1N5817s, but uh, pretty much any shot key diode concept will work there. I did have to do a little bit of rigging there to get these uh, D041 legs to fit in these little sockets, but uh, they're in there, so uh, let's give that a listen. If the sound of germanium diodes is too compressed, and the varying temperature swings isn't something you can tolerate, 
Another option would be to use Shockey diodes, such as the 1N5817s. These typically have a forward voltage drop of around 0.45 volts, so they will compress more than the typical silicon diodes like the 1N4148s would, but not quite as much as the germanium ones. Now let's remove these diodes and replace them with some LEDs. Okay, so here we have LEDs in place of the clipping stages on, or both clipping stages, of the Big Muff. And what we'll notice here is actually when signal is going through the LEDs, uh, they will glow. So let's uh, give this a listen. LEDs, which stand for light emitting diodes, have much larger forward voltages than the previously mentioned options. They compress less, but volume is louder, and they have that large fuzz sound. For red and amber LEDs, the forward voltage is typically around 2 volts. For green LEDs, they're typically a bit higher at 2.2 volts. Blue LEDs are even higher, with a forward voltage drop of 3.2 volts. And white LEDs, which typically have the highest forward voltages of LEDs, are around 3.5 volts. Now let's try using something that isn't a diode. Now this is a particular favorite one I like to use. I don't know if this will focus on, on this or not. But uh, this is taking a TO92 footprint uh, MOSFET uh, N channel. This is a BS170 and as you can see I've folded the center leg over to the left there and this will create a classic MOSFET diode type setup. So I got a set of these in all the clipping positions. And let's hear how that sounds. What this was designed to show is that you can use certain discrete components that have diodes inside of them, such as some MOSFETs. If you tie the gate and drain pin together, you can use the drain pin and the source pin as a diode. As you can see even in the symbol here, there's a diode shown inside the MOSFET. The forward voltages for these are typically around 1 volt and will sound similar to silicon diodes, but will be a little bit smoother. So there you have it. These are some of the options that you can have when modifying diodes in a big muff style circuit. Another option that I didn't mention is that you can also mix and match these diodes to create asymmetrical clipping effects. Please experiment with these combinations and see what you can come up with, as there are a lot of options here. I'd also like to take a second to thank Colin from CS Guitars for giving me some help with visuals on clipping. Check out his YouTube channel when you get a chance. A link will be in the description below. Again, if you would like to purchase the DBE Siberian PCB so that you can build your own Big Muff style pedal, please hit up our web store at www.diyguitarpedals.com.au and look through our DBE project section. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe as it really helps out this channel. And we'll see you again in the next video. Cheers.